Coach, Michigan at Penn State. Mm. Big game in the East, big game for the Big Ten, big game for the entire country. And it's a whiteout yeah. at Penn State. Who tell, ever tell created me. that damn whiteout, man? Uh, I, I, I know her personally, but that's not the point. Uh, tell us about Terry did. Yeah. We're going to give her tell her us due. about the Penn State whiteout and the problems. Yeah, the yeah I, I always had... Death Valley LSU is the number one hardest stadium to play when I was at Florida at night game. And then I gave it to Penn State the last few years. We played in four whiteouts, one or two overtimes. And then last year we came from, I think, two scores down in the fourth quarter. So it's an incredible place. They'll be out of their minds for that game. This is a big game. This is their whiteout game. My guess is there's certain situations where it gets even louder. Let's talk third and long. Yeah. Okay, both teams are going to be faced with third and long situations in this game. There's no doubt and their success in these situations may be the difference in the game. If it's third and long or extra long, right. tw two out of 10 times, maybe you'll get that executed. So I had a theory about third and long, extra long. I will share it with our team, stay out of it. <laughs> You're not gonna, that's very hard to execute. So as Michigan and Penn State are game planning, how many times will they face, let's go third and extra long first? Third and extra long, that's 10 plus, right. two times a game. So you would need four plays that you can call in that scenario. Okay, once again, if you're calling it four times, you're probably losing that game. Third and long is legit, that's a seven to 10. You'd have four of those opportunities. That means you need six good calls in practice. What about the kind of routes that, that you would you would run in those situations? Does it change? It's ob it obviously would be different than the first and 10 route, right? Now, there's going to be some fans that want to swing at me when I say this. <laughs> there's always been some fans that wanted to swing at you. Go on. You had a few, too. <laughs> so when I hear comments, and even media people or even someone would say, why did you run? It's third down and 10. Run all your routes at 10 yards. And I look at them like they got six heads. You've obviously never been in that scenario, that situation. First of all, the defense knows you're going to do that. And if you're facing a good defense, which these two defenses are, are not good, they're very good. Don Brown's defense, you do not want to be dropping back and sitting there for three seconds and trying to complete balls downfield. Okay, so we would run shorter routes or I'd run the quarterback. I am not going to drop back because here's a fact too. When you're in a hostile environment, the whiteout is as tough a place as a play in America. You know the two things that I've proven myself? that brings a stadium unglued, a sack, and a block punt. How do you deal with the cadence in a stadium like Penn State during the way out? So I'm a left tackle. Hardest position to play in third down, especially against Rashawn Gary's and Winovich's and the, you know, the excellent defensive ends that are Chase Young's, you know, those right. guys. Imagine those guys. Right. First of all, they don't know the snap count or they know there's no snap count. Right. You're sitting there and I have to either hold hands or I'm watching that center's head and I got to block that guy, a first round draft pick. To me, that's, that's almost, that's not fair. Basically what you're doing, you're telling this offense lineman, I'm going to block a first round draft pick. That's a much better <laughs> athlete than I am. I'm going to have to watch the center and I used to, we say peripheral the ball, watch the ball, but also watch him. As I'm saying, I'm thinking, what are you talking about? <laughs> this guy has no chance. And I think, you know, I'm sitting there thinking, you know, how unfair that was for all these, but I'm not sure what else you do. Here's what you do, stay out third and long. <laughs> yeah. But think about it, once again, you're sitting here and the guy's already upfield. Yeah. I mean, it's, a, it's really a no-win situation. I've watched a lot of video of both those teams. Both defenses are far superior to both offenses. It's going to be a defensive game. Oh, no doubt. Everybody says keep the offense off schedule, which is true. Right. You want to keep, I like that when you're in those games, you've got to keep the defense off schedule. How do you do that? On third and long, run the ball. On third and short, throw the ball. Keep teams off balance. Don't play into their teeth. The thing that uh, the Wolverine defense at Penn State, they would like nothing more than you run, run, pass. If you get in that flow, which we've all been there, you've been there, I've been there, that's, that's not a good feeling on the sideline. When you control them by keeping them off balance, by throwing when you're not usually throwing, that's how to neutralize a great defense.